Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to talk about Azure OpenAI. We're going to do a very short video basically talking about how to migrate from classic OpenAI into Azure OpenAI. So let's talk about what that means first. When we talk about OpenAI, you're probably thinking of the company from Sam Altman. They're building ChatGPT, GPT-4, and, and Dolly and other products as well. And most of us are accessing um, these chat services, these chatbots, and these AI APIs through classic OpenAI. Now, OpenAI has a major investor partner in Microsoft. And something that Microsoft has is it is able to offer OpenAI's services. They're not OpenAI the company, but they're offering OpenAI's services. And more importantly, Microsoft has Microsoft Azure. Think of it as Microsoft's version of AWS or Google Cloud. Um, Microsoft Azure is how they offer OpenAI. And so the costs are virtually the same. It's the fraction of the penny. And when you compare them side to side, um, a lot of the features, it should perform basically identi identically. And the price is exactly the same. So why go through this charade? Well, there's, there's two major reasons. Number one, you have a lot of companies and enterprises that already do business with Microsoft. They're already familiar with them. It's just less red tape than finding OpenAI, signing a contract with them, getting an agreement in place. The other reason is if you look online and you analyze what is happening in Azure, you're going to find that Azure is much friendlier to businesses when it comes to security and compliance. Azure, Microsoft Azure is offering OpenAI in your own infrastructure, in your own instance, in a you know, limited geographic location. And it's from a brand that people trust, um, people are already well aware of. So this is really for businesses. If you are building you know, a hobby project, if you're building something for your own use, you know, it really doesn't matter if they should perform identically. In fact, Azure is kind of annoying to deal with because you still have to apply for access. It's like the old days of OpenAI where there's a wait list, you have to apply. And when you get access to Azure OpenAI, you have to apply for access to GPT-4 um, and you slowly move up that way. But um, the, the major perk is if you think about the workplace, they're very sensitive about where data goes, how the AI works, all of those things, which Microsoft does a much better job of promising and documenting how they're going to keep data secure, how they're going to make sure that they're compliant with uh, a lot of different standards. SOC 2, ISO, HIPAA, CSA, etc. I don't know what all of those things are, but um, Largely, if you look at the documents, Microsoft can promise a lot of things. Uh, the one big thing for me and for a lot of people, even hobbyists, is um, where data is located. Um, since it's running on your Azure instance and you can open it in US West, US East, Europe, uh, you can keep your data in one location. And so if you're worried about privacy laws and where personal data is going, um, this is one way you can keep track, whereas OpenAI really doesn't tell you all that much. OK, enough rambling. This is really to make sure that you can use it in a business. If you're like me, you know, you're, you're a cog in a massive wheel, but you still want to use ChatGPT, they're not really letting you use it. One way is to propose the combination maybe go to Azure um, for its OpenAI services. Okay, let's go back here. Um, if you look at OpenAI's documentation, you can actually ask it to show you Python code. And this is where I'm going here. Uh, I have a backend that's built on Python, and it's actually very, very easy to, to get code started. So 
let's take a look at the sample here. I'm going to zoom in. Um, you import OS, you import OpenAI, and then you have a nice simple interface. Go chat completion dot create, and then you list your model and you list your messages. Uh, very, very straightforward. And I'm going to show you quickly. This is uh, a real functioning um, instance that, that I'm using. Uh, it has an open AI key in the back right here in the secrets file, but and I'm going to word wrap and zoom in so you folks can read. Um, there are two here. Um, let's go with chat because most of us are using the chat bot at this point. At the very top, you're importing open AI. Uh, you have an open AI key. You could ignore the rest. This is from the rest of the infrastructure, but you have the open AI uh, key and you'll import open AI. Then you really just call um, one message here. Um, you are calling open AI. That's why you import it. And you ask it to run the chat completion. And of that, you use the sub function create. In this case, you're just going model. You choose the model, whether it's GPT-3 or 4, and then you put your messages. In this case, um, I a message is just a list of messages. And one of them could be like this, a dictionary in which you're giving a role, whether it's a system, the user, the assistant, um, and then the content, what, what you're saying. Um, so this could be, say, hello world, if you'd like. Uh, I am going to take this out just because I think this is confusing enough already. So I had a little bit in which I'm adding um, additional messages so that I could put like three things I said. Um, but in this case, let's put a single message, a list of only one message. You send it, you get a response back, and you can pull out the information. Now, um, you might think the infrastructure is very different, but if you look at Microsoft's version, it's actually importing the exact same library. The only difference is that you switch a few of these additional pieces. So I'm gonna copy this over and I'm gonna get rid of this because we, we just don't care about this anymore. I don't care about this. Let's just remove this as well. Just keep this very, very clean. Okay, so this is basically the extent at which you need to change things. First of all, when you run open, uh, when you import OpenAI, you get to change a few of these settings. By default, it's connecting to classic OpenAI. But in this case, you're switching the type to Azure. Uh, you have an API version. Um, and then the more important point is that you have an API base. So OpenAI, everybody's connected to the same, I guess, supercomputer at the server. But in this case, um, when you have Azure, everyone's own instance is their endpoint. So you get a unique endpoint that you connect to, and you also get a unique key, um, which is true in OpenAI as well. So I, I, I shouldn't be using my old key. I should be using a new uh, Azure key. Um, once you paste these four, you're more or less done. But the only other quirk I noticed when switching over is that, and I gotta pull this up again, is that um, instead of model, Azure calls it engine. So when you make this completion call, you have to take out the model and use engine instead. So before I had GPT-4, um, you know, it's the same string, but instead of model, it's being called an engine. And that's that's all there is to it. You You have to provide um, these couple overarching features, but the rest of your code basically remains identical. The only thing to watch out for is that model flips to engine. So that's the only actual change you have to make to your code. And that's all there is to it. 
um, you have to sign up, you have to wait and, and, and finally get access to it. But when you do, you can use all of your old open AI work and bring it over to Azure. So I hope that was helpful. Um, it, it was a lot less painful than I thought it would be. And so I'm, I'm just very um, happy to share this with you. I hope you guys and, and your uh, employers and enterprises can make use of AI. Um, Azure is probably one of the best things to happen moving forward. They just have a lot more of this control, ethics, security, privacy, all on board. Anyways, I will see you next week with another project. Thank you.